want to just pivot briefly to the president's concerns about foreign assistance. Mm -hmm. um, under Secretary Hale, who will be with us later today, uh, testified that during this relevant time frame, um, there was a, a real focus to re-examine all federal aid programs. Are, are you aware of that interest of the president? I'm generally aware of the president's skepticism toward foreign aid and, you know, conditioning foreign aid on certain things. I'm generally aware of that, yes. And Ambassador Hale testified, and his testimony has been public, um, almost a, a zero-based concept that each assistance program and each country that receives the program be evaluated. The program made sense that we avoid nation building and that we not provide assistance to countries that are lost to us in terms of policy, whether it's because um, corruption or, or, you know, another reason. Um, is that something you were aware of at, at the time? Generally, yes. Okay. And you're certainly aware that the president was concerned about the European allies' the contributions to the region. Exactly why I was involved. Okay. So, you know, as we get down to September 11th, right before the, you know, you're advocating that the, the pause be lifted, correct? But yeah, I didn't think the, I personally didn't think right. the pause should have ever been put in okay. place. Okay. Yeah. But as we get down to September 11th and you're talking with Senator Johnson and, and so forth, um, you don't know with certainty that the genuine reason the president was implementing the pause wasn't because of his, his concerns about the allies or his concerns about foreign assistance generally or that he wasn't just trying to hold the aid as long as he could to see what he could, um, you know, what type of information he could get about uh, those two subjects. Fair enough. Okay. Um, I am really trying to finish up before my, so I can yield some time back. Um, do we have anything else, Mr. I have nothing else. Thank you. Yield back. Chairman yields back. Um, yield back. The balance let's, of our time. Uh, let's take a 30 minute recess to allow uh, Mr. Solon, Ambassador Solon uh, to get a bite to eat. I think the members of the committee might like to get a bite to eat. Uh, and then we will resume with the member uh, rounds of questioning of five minutes. Uh, if we could allow the witnesses to have the opportunity to leave the room first. Um, Welcome back. I know there is a stark contrast from the idiot you just saw on your screen moments ago, uh, House Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff for brains. Um, but it's going to get a lot prettier any second now because joining us again, one of my favorite uh, guests on the show, Maureen Callahan, is here. Maureen, thank you so much. Thank you so she much. is uh, emblazoned in a splendid red velvet suit for the holidays, I presume. But, I got to uh, keep up with you, John. You're always so dashing when you come on the show. It's hard to keep up with you. Well, thank you for uh, coming back. I know um, I've been, our audience also has follows your columns and you've given us some great commentary on the show. But your most recent column struck a chord with me that mm -hmm. um, Google is apparently, and Amazon in some instances, mm -hmm. are now focused on um, potentially violating HIPAA regulations right, right. and collecting tons and tons of medical data mm -hmm. uh, on us Americans. And right. it's just another way into our house, our pocketbook, mm -hmm. and our body. Mm -hmm. How scary is this? I know it's getting a good response. I think it's terrifying. I can't believe that this topic in particular is not uh, just dug into at every presidential debate that is happening. There's another one uh, tonight. Um, after I wrote that column, which was off of a Wall Street Journal expose, that Google has been secretly hoovering up the private health information of over 50 million Americans across 21 states, doing what, what with it, we don't know. I later read just recently, and tell me if you've heard of this, Google is secretly building its own town right now. Oh where everything will be wired up. Well, the homes will be wired I want up. You to, I want you to know about this too, Maureen. I'm sorry, but you, you're a great investigative journalist. You're the author of American Predator, um, which is a great book. Thank you. About one of the most prolific and meticulous serial killers of mm -hmm. all time. 
go out and find American Predator if you want to read a great book about a devious, sick mind. But uh, what Google has been doing over the last 10 years is these contests with cities where they say, hey, we're thinking about opening up a whole new place and you're in the running for it. I don't know if you know this, but look into it. They give the city and the municipality this huge list of things that they must provide, mm -hmm. including their infrastructure, their mm -hmm. roads, their mm -hmm. future roadmaps, mm -hmm. their, their electrical grid, mm -hmm. their power mm -hmm. grid. And then Google is basically, if you ask me, they're colonizing America with all these little places that they're building. Yes, well, Amazon did the same thing, yeah. as, as we saw fairly right. recently. And Scott Galloway, who is an NYU professor and an expert in all things nefarious regarding big tech, yeah. Uh, spoke about this, and, and I couldn't have agreed with him more, that these, you know, our great American cities were basically humiliating themselves, bending at the knee to have Amazon land right. in their backyard when full on knowing it was going to wind up in New York until de Blasio et al., right. AOC, uh, or, you know, a major hub that would put Jeff Bezos on the East Coast near his D.C. Girlfriend. And his girlfriend. We didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, now, yeah. We know. Uh, now we know. But D.C. Oh, well, she's at L.A. Yeah, she's probably, whatever. She was here um, a lot. But, but anyway, yeah. I mean, I think that there, there is not nearly enough um, oversight on the, on the part of the federal government into what these tech companies are doing. And they are actually, uh, if not running the world now, they're on the verge of they're it. They're very close yeah. to it. Um, we're going to keep running the world for the next, uh, the last of this hour. We're going to keep it right here. Can you stay with us? Of course, yeah. Uh, if you ask me, the real Democratic presidential contender has not come into the race. I think it's going to be Michelle Obama. We're going to come back with Maureen Callahan and talk about the selling of Michelle Obama. We'll take a quick break back after this. Thanks.